45,000 union dock workers likely to walk off the job at midnight, kicking off a massive strike that could shut down ports from Maine to Texas. And we have to fight for what we rightfully deserve. Let's get a contract and let's move on with this world. The union demanding a 77% wage increase over six years and limits on the use of the automation of cranes, gates, and container moving trucks. The United States Maritime Alliance has responded, offering a 40% pay hike. The imminent strike between the International Longshoremen's Association and the United States Maritime Alliance would impact 14 ports that handle about half the goods shipped in and out of the U.S. Disrupting the shipping industry, leading to delays in goods and possible price increases, everything from cars to fresh fruits, machinery, appliances and electronics. According to Oxford Economics, in all, it could cost the American economy up to $7.5 billion per week. The Port of New York, New Jersey, one of the nation's busiest, New York's governor is preparing. I want to reassure everybody we have been taking countless precautionary steps to speed up the process of unloading these ships and, and deal with the container cargo containers in advance of this. So we're in much better shape than we had been if we had not done this. ABC's Elizabeth Scholze is in Baltimore, Maryland, where the owner of an Asian food warehouse says more than half of the company's merchandise stock will be stalled if the strike happens. The costs and the complete stoppage of inventory coming into the company would have a huge impact on everyone who works here and most importantly our customers because they're going to see prices rise, they're going to see products become less available. President Biden saying he does not plan to intervene, which he has the power to do so, saying it is collective bargaining, urging USMC to come to a fair agreement quickly. Melissa Adon, ABC News, Los Angeles. This is the Rebel Call Channel. Welcome to today's show. A strategically staged port strike is underway. So dock workers from Maine to Texas are going on strike as of October 1st. Of course, this works perfectly so they can politicize this and make this a left-right thing like they're doing with every single major issue that's going on. Because as long as they keep it as a left-right issue, the citizens will continue to focus on the political parties instead of saying, these people need to be held accountable in power who are supposedly working for us, who we supposedly elect, their job is to work for us. So if there's an issue like this going on on the docks where there's a strike going on, the government should be intervening to make sure that there aren't shortages and price hikes because that's what this leads to. Does that sound like a common theme? Does that sound like something that's important to them? Well, it is because remember the name of the game here is sabotage. So from everything you're seeing going on from our government allowing criminals to run loose and run rampant and not holding them accountable and not arresting them. In fact, even giving them weapons and allowing them to do the things that they're doing. In fact, in a lot of cases, planting these people, telling them what to do, like walk up to individuals in New York City and Los Angeles and punch people in the face. This is all strategically being done as part of sabotage. And just like we saw during the outbreak, it's very important to have major food shortages and, and price hikes because when you're trying to bring a country to its knees, this is the perfect way to do it. So the narrative that's out there, of course, is that this is a left-right thing because it's not, but they want to make sure that you're thinking in those terms. So conservatives are angry at the Biden administration for not intervening in this. And as you see some of the dock workers out there, they're wearing shirts that say, if it's a fight they want, it's a war they're going to get. And part of the narrative that's out there is that the looming port strike threatens to raise prices just in time for Election Day. Biden won't invoke the Taft-Hartley Act to stop the port strike that could cost $5 billion a day. These are the types of things that the government's supposed to be focused on. Making sure that things like this don't happen. That's the purpose of government for any of the young people out there that are wondering how countries actually work and operate and what the governments are supposed to do. They're supposed to be doing stuff like this, making sure, well, we have to prevent this from happening. We should intervene here to make sure that there aren't food shortages and to make sure that people aren't spending more and more money so they eventually go broke. But that's what the government wants. 
So, of course, what the government does is they play to the weak-minded sheeple out there and they pretend like the only thing they care about is people's gender IDs and what pronouns are being used. This drives one side completely insane and then it plays into the other side who has no idea what a government's purpose actually is. So you can see that this literally will affect Maine down to Texas. Every single port on the East Coast. And at the same time, don't forget that they're on strike and they're going to shut ports down and they're going to raise prices and we're going to have shortages. Don't forget about the other elephant in the room, the weaponized weather that we're seeing because there are more hurricanes lurking and I'll get into that in separate videos. We have Joyce, we have Kirk. We just have convenient tropical storms turning into hurricanes that we're supposed to believe is natural, but the more desensitized people become to storm after storm after storm and the more they hear that this is part of what happens with carbon emissions, the more they'll accept it as reality and not see what's actually happening, which is the government using silent weapons for quiet wars. Even though these weapons aren't so silent, they just know that you won't be able to figure out that they have the ability to create these storms and they're targeting specific areas. And it's convenient that the East Coast is being ravaged by this. So if you haven't heard the guy who's supposedly in control of the ILA of these port, this port strike that's going on, his name is Harold Daggett. And of course, conservatives are making some of his interviews go viral because they want to make sure that this is a political thing because all of these people are completely insane and they look at a story like this and they want you to say, make sure you go vote for Donald Trump. Oh yeah, don't vote for the Democrats because this is their fault. This is their responsibility. Trump will fix this. Instead of saying, you know what? I've had enough of the games. I've had enough of the nonsense. There's clearly something deliberately going on here where the government is meddling in our lives and they're sabotaging every single thing that we know is normal. They're sabotaging our food supply. In fact, they're openly buying our farmland or giving it to China or other countries. They're openly talking about replacing human beings with robots and machines. These are all things that humans should be united on and saying, you know what? I don't care what party these people claim to be involved in. These are things that they're supposed to be fixing. But instead, of course, the conservatives want you to look at this and say, make sure you vote for Donald. Listen to this guy's interview. And again, the warnings about what could occur here in regards to a strike. And it's almost like, I'm sure if we go deep into this, <laughs> into the, you know, the history of Harold Daggett, we'll find his connections to many secret societies, not just Freemasonry. But this is the International Longshoresmen's Association president talking about all of the stuff that's going to come. And he seems pretty, if you ask me, he seems pretty excited about it, probably because he's playing his role in all of this as well. Somebody who's been indicted many times, he's clearly working with the government because they want this strike. They don't want to prevent this strike. They want this strike. And the government wants this strike too, which is why it's happening. These people today don't know what a strike is. Right. When my men hit the streets from Maine to Texas, every single port will lock down. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you. First week, be all over the news every night, boom, boom. Second week, guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships. They get laid off. Third week, malls start closing down. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. Construction workers get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me. I'm putting a Taff Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taff Hartley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are going to go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, the company's money to pay their salaries. Well, they go one from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. They're going to be like this. Who's going to win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down and let's get a contract and let's move on with this world. And in today's world, I'll cripple you. I will cripple you. And you have no idea what that means. Nobody does. So these are things that are conveniently happening that serve a purpose to a government who is trying to destroy the infrastructure. The fact that people out there don't see sabotage 
as the thing that's going on is pretty perplexing. But the reason that people don't see that this is deliberate sabotage, the reason that they don't say, this is too many things happening at once, is because of the left-right paradigm, because they're too quick to point fingers at the opposite political party, right? That's all that it matters to them, is who's responsible. Oh, well, this is Biden's fault, so we should go after Biden. Instead of saying, we've had enough, this is what everyone should be saying. We've had enough. We've had enough of this. There's clearly something going on here where nobody in Congress is doing anything for the benefit of the civilians other than bringing America's to, America to its knees. All of the Republicans in power constantly gaslight everybody out there about Hunter Biden and about the pronouns and the curriculum in schools. What people should be doing is pulling their kids out of school, getting the technology out of their homes, and working with one another to learn trades, to be self-sufficient, and not relying on a government that's gone completely rogue. But they don't see that. They see stories like this and they say, who can we blame for? Well, we'll blame the opposing political party because that's how the left-right divide works. It keeps all of the civilians divided among parties instead of holding all of these clowns, all of these people who weren't elected in the first place, responsible for what they're doing. And if they're not going to be removed by the civilians from office, then the civilians need to remove themselves for, from participating in this government. So dock workers at ports from Maine to Texas have begun walking picket lines early this morning on October 1st in a strike over wages and automation that could reignite inflation and cause shortages of goods if it goes on more than a few weeks. The contract between the ports and about 45,000 members of the International Longshoremen's Association expired at midnight, and even though progress was reported in talks on Monday, the workers went on strike. The strike affecting 36 ports is the first by the union since 1977. Workers began picketing at the port in Philadelphia shortly after midnight, walking in a circle at a rail crossing outside the port and chanting no work without a fair contract. The union had message boards on the side of a truck reading Automation Hurts Families, ILA stands for Job Protection. Local ILA President Boys Butler said that workers want a fair contract that doesn't allow automation at their jobs. And this is how it should be everywhere. We shouldn't just be saying we don't want automation. We should be saying we don't want any of this stuff they're trying to tell us that we need to adapt to, like artificial intelligence, because all the benefits they tell us about are all there to make you accept it. All the benefits of, oh, AI, and all of these brain chips and these Neuralink technologies that they're pushing, well, it's not for you to decide if we should have it because people are creating it for that poor person that nobody knows who has Parkinson's or has Alzheimer's. Instead of saying, well, why do they have it? Because the government's responsible for giving these diseases to the civilians because they're spraying chemicals on us every single day and they're sticking it in our food and they're putting it in our water. And that's why, because guess what? It's not natural for human beings to drink soft metals or to eat soft metals, or for them to be exposed to it every day from the sky and the air that they breathe. That's why everybody's so sick, but of course, they'll never tell you that. They just want you to say, look, we're going forward with this tech because we want to help these people out there who are sick, and it's not for you to say if we should do this or not because we're good people. Thus, we have them moving forward with all of these technology advancements, which are really just to coerce you into accepting this technology and eventually embedding yourself with it. So back to the strike. This whole note, you know, this is exactly what the government should be focusing on. The government should be focusing on, look, we don't need another shortage. We don't need any more inflation, especially after what happened in 2020, 2021, 2022, where we cost so many people their jobs, where so many people were unable to work and close, had to close their businesses. And on top of that, we forced people to lose their jobs because they wouldn't take something that they didn't want to take, even though we always preach about it being your body, your choice. So this would be a top priority, right? This shouldn't be a political thing. This should be a, well, they're all American citizens. We don't want anyone to go broke. We don't want anybody out there to have shortages of needs or services or whatever else could possibly come from a port shortage. Let's talk about shortage again of toilet paper, shortage again of food, all these things, right, that we take for granted. Until, of course, we can't get them anymore and we realize, well, wait, we don't have any trades. We don't know how to produce any of these things on our own. We don't know how to farm on our own. We need Walmart. We need Ralph's. We need ShopRite. We need all these grocery stores, right? Which we should never have gotten to this point in the first place. But, of course, we can thank our grandparents and our fathers and our the generations before us 
who got us so dependent on going, being able to go and buy food from a store over the years that it just became second nature. And we just forgot the trades of farming and everything else because we relied on the government, aka the businesses, to provide that for us while we went and sat at cubicles doing nothing but being told what we were doing was really important, sitting at desks all day, making quote-unquote business deals, sales deals, all these ridiculous things. They tell you about corporate America and how important it is, and everybody just buys into the propaganda, and they go sit at a desk feeling completely unfulfilled and completely unsatisfied, but they're being told that they're great, that they're successful, and they smile about it while they, you know, when the grid gets shut down or the plug gets pulled, they realize that they can't do anything for themselves. Then answering a phone or being able to create a marketing campaign or doing accounting means zero when the government decides to pull the rug out to make you even more compliant with the six sinister things that they want done. So this entire thing is sabotage. That's what this is. The government should very, you know, they should be looking at this and they should be saying, well, we give billions of dollars to Ukraine every day, right? Every day we give billions of dollars to other countries, which is not part of how taxes are supposed to work. Our tax money is supposed to go to our country, but now people are so just used to it and don't care anymore as long as they can fight with the opposite political parties, uh, you know, voters. They don't pay attention to the fact that this is illegal what they're doing. But our government should be obviously intervening here and stopping this from happening because this could bring America to its knees economically. And that's really what they're supposed to be doing. But if you know what they're actually doing, they're sabotaging the United States of America. And this is just more proof of it. So we'll see where this story goes. Of course, conservatives will say that we got to get got to go vote to make sure that this gets fixed. This would never happen on Trump's watch, right? The other side of the aisle just ignores it because that's what communist foot soldiers do. They ignore common sense and everything else, and they just defend their party. Their party could be strangling them at their front door, telling them that it's for their best interest, and they'd say, okay, that's fine, strangle me, because they're completely brain dead. And this is what we're dealing with in 2024, heading to 2025. We're, we're just witnessing our government allowing our country to collapse and keeping you so distracted and divided with so many different issues and so many different stories from all of the crap that they tell us every day about Trump and Kamala filtered all the way down to the stuff that they deliberately put out there like P. Diddy. All these things really just keep people completely distracted from saying common sense things like, wait a minute, we've supposedly voted you in. You're supposed to make sure stuff like this doesn't happen. Go fix it or we'll find somebody who will fix it because that's what politicians are supposed to do. That's what their job is, to work for us. And if they don't work for us, they should be replaced with people who will work for us. But they don't want you to think like that. They want you to just constantly be distracted and constantly blame the people who vote for the political party instead of actually blaming the people in power on both sides of the aisle who are sabotaging the United States of America. I thank everybody for being here. Hope you're all doing well. God bless all of you as always and your families.